What's going on, guys? Uh, I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, this has been a massive, uh, massive week of opportunity. Uh, I haven't seen anything like this in a very, very long time. Even before, you know, there was kind of a, a week that would come and go, maybe over a three-day pattern, but literally every single day, um, we're back to chasing moves like crazy. Um, it's been, for me, it's been my best probably four-day span versus any other month. Um, that I've had, maybe ever had, um, which is uh, really good. But at the same time, I need to be aware of that uh, because you know you're only as good as your last trade. So whether or not I'm firing all, on all cylinders and you know everything that I am trading is is you know working really well, um, all it takes is that one time where you say kind of let's see what it does or move away from you know what got you there that you know you end up you end up kind of you know, up Shit's Creek without a paddle. So um, with that said, um, this morning, uh, I didn't really uh, feel like there was too much of an A-plus type setup uh, coming out of the gate. And um, I had a little bit of um, stuff I had to do in the morning. I had a workout in the morning. I also was running late. I also had to run home to bring my daughter to school. So all of those kind of things were not necessarily expected and it got me to my desk rather late. So I had to sit down and figure out what I was going to focus on and uh, fortunately we had Netflix uh, opportunity. We had a seller which I'll go over um, and that trade just came you know, right out of the gate and worked out perfectly. So that kind of set the tone for the day. We also had HEPA, HEPA as well as a few other names which um, really worked out well. So I will go over those. Um, you know, as you guys know, it's been um, a wild week, and and um, you know, just a, a, a casual uh, shout out, obviously, to Center Point because you know I see a lot of people saying they can't get borrows, and you know, it's uh, been I've been pretty fortunate um, that we've had some really great um, opportunities lately, and without them, not a chance, not a chance um, of of getting any of these trades. Um, because look, you, you have to be able to uh, get the locate. And if you don't, you're just watching these things, which can be super frustrating, which uh, leads me to the last point before I get into, the, um, into some of the recap. But you know, if you can't get it, that's okay. Don't get frustrated that you're, you're missing out on things. That was me you know, over many years where you, know, you see everybody just killing it and you get a little upset you get a little, you feel like uh, you're missing out on all this opportunity. And so you start to kind of push the envelope on other names and you end up eating it. So while everybody else is killing it, you end up going opposite rather than just kind of sitting on your hands and chilling out until it's your market. Some people are good at earnings. Some people are good at small cap momentum. Some people are good at just daily grinding. And you got to know when it's your market. You got to know when to pull back. And there's nothing wrong with just waiting for a trade. There was a couple people in the room today, you know, like, hey, uh, I just got here midday. What's moving? What can I get in? And that's just the wrong mentality. You come, you have a plan, you wait for the stocks to come to you. And if they don't, oh, well, if they do, you attack them. So uh, I'm going to go over my trades for, for today. Um, started out of the gate with Netflix. So Netflix was uh, amazing. The goal uh, in the room was to short into the 308 push. Um, I identified pre-market a, uh, a basically a seller into that range. I was anticipating the fact that it would probably want to push up a little bit. Um, a lot of times I use VWAP as uh, like an indication as far as where it could potentially go. I also look left, look left to predict right. So when you are looking left, you would see that there's a lot of uh, action at that 308, 309 level. So no matter what, if I start in, I want to be comfortable with it pushing up to uh, that 308 level over and under, not a hard stop, and then scale in accordingly. So I had started in there a little bit, uh, started to flush out, no size on the front side of the move because I, I need it to go to 308. That's my goal. Just in case it doesn't, I'm dabbling in goes into exactly where I thought. So I start to position based on 308 over and under. So I'm okay with a dollar or two because as I stated pre-market, I was looking for the potential wash towards 290s. Um, and uh, we got exactly that. And so I went ahead and I started in, uh, I started in and, and size into that ramp and basically using these pre-market highs as sort of the risk. I don't care if it goes up and touches them. 
The only concern that I would have is if it starts to base and grind up from there. And if it does do that, then that's where I stop out and I don't scale in anymore. So immediately it came right in to the 304 level. So I took a quick four bucks per share after I had sized in. And as soon as I covered, it tried to rebound and whenever it should rebound and it doesn't. So in this case, it tried to rebound back up, but it failed. I went ahead and sized back in, sized back in again. And then I started to put some under the, the 290. So I went ahead and covered, or excuse me, the, the 300. So I put some 298, I covered some 297, all the way down to about 291.70. So it worked out really, really well. Um, and it set the tone for the day, like I said, into some of these other names that I was watching. So uh, this was obviously an earnings play last night. All the, um, all the notes on it were kind of relatively cautious. There was no overly bullish type of um, talk like usual. So that's what kind of led me to that uh, thought process on, on the trade. And once the price confirmed, um, you know, obviously I was interested. Um, HOV was a, a nice one. Uh, this one was, this is all about doing homework, right? So if you were looking at this chart, I had mentioned it a few times on, you know, Twitter and whatnot. Holy crap, look at the move. Um, so it had been going up steadily and it, it kind of had to squeeze out, pull back to the 21 range. And then the last I had seen it was about 23. And, and same thing, I called Phil last night. I was like, dude, we need to watch HOV. And, um, and I asked him, I was, when was the last time you saw it? And he's like, 23. I was like, it's 28. And so we were hoping for potentially a 30 push, uh, but it came out of the woodwork today and just, you know, failed. And uh, so I went ahead and started in there. Um, fortunately, that's the beauty of the, the chat room. You know, I had my price alerts actually set relatively lower, uh, relatively low uh, compared to, you know, what ended up happening. And so anyway, somebody had mentioned the, the stuff and fail. And uh, so right away, as soon as I saw that, I reacted because I looked at it, I pulled it up real quick. I didn't need to look at the daily. I didn't need to think about what I was doing. I was able to just to fire off to the bid um, because I was prepared from the night before. You can't do that if you're not prepared. So because of that, I was able to get a really good average and that was 2830s and 28, almost 50s. Then I added in and then I started to scale up and I probably got a little bit too many. Um, so I got a little nervous, so I sized back down a little bit right over here uh, before I started to scale back in, add, 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 add. And so basically went from 28 all the way to 26 ads down to 25 ads, covered some 24s down to about 2370s, and I was all out right over here at the 24 level. So um, it was starting to grind back. I didn't want to get into a situation where I overstayed. Um, and you know, all you have to do is look at the daily chart. And if you need any other um, confirmation that yes, it potentially could keep on going, just look at the daily chart over the last month or two. So uh, really clean trade, again, came from preparation. So uh, ASMB, ASMB was the um, a nice breakout. It was on scan last night. Um, and the goal was a week open for a breakout. And I was thinking 13 to 14, I think. Yeah, 13 to 14. So, you know, I didn't get the week open or the long. Uh, what I did is I saw it at 15. It started ramping up, ramping up. It started to, to squeeze up. So I started to put on a few. And again, just like I talked about, just like I talked about with VIV last night, VIVE rather, um, and SES even today, um, I always put on a little dabble. And a little dabble is, you know, I'm good with it continuing to go higher because I want it in my positions column because I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see it bouncing around. I'm gonna see it um, right in front of me. And that's where I look and that's where I monitor my positions. So. If I don't, there's a good chance that I flip the chart off and I end up missing it totally. So that's why I do that. So I went ahead and put a little bit on with my goal being 1850s. The reason why I wanted the 1850s ramp was we had a gap fill back here. And you can see it went right to that level. And I had mentioned that my goal was to size into that if it, if it kind of showed that it was failing. And so basically, this is the highest volume day if you go, if you're looking left, and once again, look left, predict right. So this very easily could have gone 1920. So it doesn't, it's not just a 1850 short. It's a 1850 is my goal. Anything that I take 
prior to 1850, I'm, I'm fine with it pushing through. And then I need to see it kind of fail, 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 follow through, and then pull back. So that's exactly what I did. And uh, the most important part is covering into the washes. So there was a quick buck pullback each time. And as I said to the room, when it flushes out, I want to cover around that core every single time until it suggests that it's going to stay heavy because this is when people get in trouble. They, they start in and then it starts to go sideways. Then they add, it starts to go sideways. It breaks out. And now they have two or three times their dabble or their starter and it's not a starter anymore. They actually have a position. They might have a third or a half size or maybe even more. So the point being is if you're trading the front side, you need to be there on the flushes. You need to be ready to cover some. And that's gonna build up your realize and allow you to be a little bit more patient and let the trade work. So again, I did the same thing versus prior high and then covered into the flushes. I started to go ahead and dabble again, just in case it got heavy. Uh, and you can see I started into the 1850s based off of the, the prior plan that I had mentioned. Uh, and then you can see it flushed out, flushed out, flushed out. And uh, yeah, I covered it too early, but you know what? It is what it is. So um, 1850s down to about 17 or so. Ended up going down to, wow, uh, I guess some 1450, 1420 prints after hours, but whatever. I mean, um, you can't get mad at that and that kind of frustration will get you in trouble because you're gonna be you know, upset that you missed it and uh, you know, chase the next one and, and it's never a good, good idea. So, um, all right, so that was that. Um, then we had, so, HEPA was was a crazy one and we talked about this on DTSS and I would encourage you guys that uh, do follow me on Twitter uh, to go back and read the commentary related to the tape. Um, sometimes people say tape is just you know a, a silly word to try to get you interested and whatnot but you've seen it time and time and time and time again um, and you know what Tape does not necessarily mean that one thing is gonna happen. What it means is it's a time to gather information. And when you start to see it, you know that either the next, lit, the next breakout is near or the next flush is near. Something is happening, something is churning, and what happens is you need to figure out what levels are important and you need to figure out what happens next. Is the next move a, a breakout and then it stuffs? Then it's likely to slam. Or if it breaks out and it stuffs and it holds, then it might start to churn up and churn up and churn up and keep on going. So at any rate, uh, I was talking about that in this area and the tape on DTSS was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 10,000 share blocks, back and forth, back and forth. And you know, what they do when that happens is, you know, they was working all the rest of the time. Everybody was, was ramping up, they squeezed everybody out, but now they're still supporting it, but they might've, kind of bought too many back. They might have supported too many. And there's not enough borrows, there's not enough um, covers coming in. And now instead of always selling out on the offer, now they're starting to kind of buy too much. They get heavy, they get top heavy. So if the breakout, the squeeze does not work, what do you think is gonna happen? They're gonna pull the bids because it's too risky for them to continue to support the name. Otherwise they're gonna end up losing money on the play. And they probably already will because there's gonna be no support besides them. So. That's what we saw on DTSS and that's, uh, you know, I would encourage you to go back and you can just do uh, the money sign DTIS, uh, DTSS um, Investors Live. You can see the commentary related to that. Uh, but at some point I will do a uh, review or recap of those. But like I said, it's been a busy week. So I'm, I've been recording some of this tape. I've been, uh, I got the HEPA tape today with the commentary. Um, but why am I telling you this with DTSS? So we saw the same thing in HEPA today, later on in the day. So I'll go over that trade uh, shortly. But uh, in the morning, uh, you know, I, di I didn't really have any action. Like I said, I, I was a little discombobbled, discombobbled this morning um, and I, I didn't have the borrows at first. I was uh, at the gym and then I had to take my daughter to school. So there was a lot going on pre-market. I wasn't gonna get into a situation where, you know, I just put some on mobile. I'm not really uh, monitoring what's going on. And then, you know, I'm, I'm down. And then I start off my day after an unbelievable week because I had FOMO, I didn't wanna miss the pullback. So I was hoping that this thing would rip out of the open so I could squeeze. Um, so we had a great opportunity. 
where it, it did ramp up um, and uh, a, a newsletter got long um, and you could tell right away as soon as they got long uh, it, it, it didn't budge um, then they sold it came down they got long again it popped up a little bit and uh, you could just tell there was a, a continual seller into that that move so after about maybe six seven eight nine times it wasn't breaking down so you can see when I shorted this, I actually covered. You couldn't really see those covers uh, in this, but um, you can see that I actually covered the flush. Then I reshorted that next newsletter buy because as soon as they bought it, literally the offer did not uptick. So the way you got to think about it is if all that volume comes into the offer and it doesn't uptick, these are all sheep buying. If all that all that volume comes into the, the offer, it doesn't uptick, what do you think is gonna happen next? They're gonna look for the exit. Left side. So they all hit the bid at the same time. So at any rate, I went ahead and uh, added short, had a great average. I mean, it was a nice 420, 410, and it slammed down to 370, 380, immediately up 30, 40 cents. But it wasn't, it wasn't breaking down. And it ramped up, came down. This this move right here, it should have it should have been it. That should have been it. It did the squeeze out up over four, and it failed. So looking left, you can kind of see that you know I had a little bit of trouble here. So what I did is I said, you know what, I'm having a good week. It's 50/50 chance here. I'm gonna go ahead and get out and join the trend. And uh, so that's exactly what I did. And as I mentioned in the room, you know, I'm using 360s as a risk. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna fight this thing anymore, uh, and fight what, it, what it's showing me. And as I would encourage you guys again to go view the tweets, I will try to merge them onto a post at some point. But don't ignore the fact that it should have died ten times. So it starts to squeeze up. So I went ahead and locked some of it in, assuming that it was gonna fail. Right? If we look left, we assume that it's gonna fail at this level you can always add back to your position. So then it ramped up and I went ahead and sold out the rest. So that was a nice quick buck, buck 20 per share. It ended up going about a buck 50 um, and you know, it was pretty nice from there. So later on in the day, uh, my goal was to kind of start in there and potentially anticipate the breakdown. However, um, and again, you know, I, I tweeted and mentioned in the room, don't get emotionally involved. So I can dabble in slowly throughout the day and my goal, as I wrote, was 420s. 420s was, I felt like there was a seller. And then 380s was kind of the support level um, from, from earlier. And it was basically consolidating between 390s and that 420 level. A lot of times when they want to create a trap, they will break through that level and then you'll see a whole bunch of volume come because that's everybody covering, everybody nervous. And they've trained everybody right here to be nervous, to be nervous as hell. So if it starts to break out again, everybody is nervous that this is gonna go 50 to 80 cents again, or a dollar, and so they're gonna be covering. So if they can create that liquidity, then they can go ahead and exit. And in order to create that liquidity, as it's not breaking down, but it's also not breaking out, they're not really getting any cover, they start to block back and forth, go back and forth with blocks. 10K, 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 and not, not 10K blocks, but just you can see it on the offer, 15K here, they swipe it, then the bid side gets hit, then the offer gets hit. They're creating this illusion that something's going on. There's a bunch of volume and we're getting close. So there's two reasons for that. One is if they can create enough interest, people are gonna start buying for that breakout. Or two, if they can create enough kind of uh, anticipation that it's going to break down, they're going to be trapping shorts. So if they then break that 420, 450 level, guess what? Everybody's happy because it's breaking out. They're not selling and shorts that just anticipated the 410 crack are now freaking out covering. That's where I want to short. That's where I shorted and then anticipated that unwind. And all of that was told, the whole entire tale was told in the tape. Um, so that was HEPA, and again, uh, I will post that for members to kind of go through it, and I'll try to copy and paste all the commentary to go through it. I didn't do it in the Momentum room, I did it in the Trader's Lounge. Um, we have a separate uh, room for all Q&A, because 
We have the main trading floor, which you know nobody nobody talks in during the day as far as op topic. And then we have what's called the trader's lounge, and that's you know anything goes, ask anything you want. So uh, I was going through exactly what I saw, telling people what to watch, telling people what I thought and why. And again, it's very subjective. It does not mean that it's gonna go up or down. What's, what matters is how it reacts on certain levels. And when it breaks at 420 and it rips and they stuff at 440s, 450s, that's the tail, that, that's telling the tail. And um, as you saw, it, it worked out perfectly. Um, so that was uh, that. Was that. Uh, let's see what else we had. Um, um overstock i missed it missed a nice little unwind today i just kind of chased it down and, and covered it relatively flat chased it down around the 1120s and covered 1130s and then ses i dabbled into the front side of this move uh, a little bit a little bit and uh, then ended up just covering throughout the day so this actually ended up being a pretty good trade um i didn't size up until the back side of the move um, but uh, the key with these VIVE, uh, SES, and all these other ones is just you know watch your sizes. I know where they're going to end up. I just don't want to get too many too soon because I will be that buyer into the 1050s, being nervous, being afraid that it's going to rip up. So um, I didn't b borrow very many. They were still kind of expensive, but either way, uh, I was pretty happy with the trade. I got some at the uh, the close there, but ended up missing out on uh, a nice little flush. So, um, and then I had this monster SDC move where I made about, uh, I don't know, seven cents. So those were the majority of the trades today. I don't think that there was anything else to discuss. Um, Cron, I missed a really big opportunity. That would have been nice today. Um, that was 11.50, 12s, um, pre uh, after hours yesterday, and then completely unwound back down to the eights today. Um, but you never know. Right now, the market's nuts. People are chasing stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. So um, it's really important to uh, make sure that if something is not working, it's off your radar, right? There's so much going on right now that if you are focusing on names that are not working, if you're focusing on uh, losing positions, then they're going to be taking most of your attention away from the A-plus setups. So, so, um, that's what I talked about in uh, Vegas, which by the way, this uh, breakout, we finally broke a million bucks uh, donated. So that is awesome for, uh, for the charity. But um, the conversation that I had in Vegas with uh, folks was um, that, you know, if it, basically if a tenant isn't paying um, you rent, kick them out. And tenant being stocks. And uh, at some point I'll be sharing that. But basically, if if you're holding on to positions and you're waiting and watching and hoping that they work, you're missing opportunity. You've got your blinders on, you can't see left or right, and you're missing opportunity in this market. So it's important to only scale into your winners, keep your losses in minimal, and that's really it. Um, wait for the A-plus opportunities, and also know when to size down and also take your foot off the pedal. So. That's a reminder for me as well, because right now I've been trading extremely well, the best I have all year. Um, it started with the SES trade for, from the long side idea at, at the two, uh, well, 180s. For those of you guys that watched the scan two Sundays ago, um, I told you that I saw some action in the tape and that it was starting to interest me because it felt like a trap uh, each time it went up to 220s two, two to 250s and slammed it back down. Um, go back to two Sunday scans ago and also where they uh, purposely put the SSR on into the close one of those days. So uh, that S SES trade interested me a lot and uh, you know obviously it uh, turned into a, a crazy trade. So um, the action that they kind of presented was accurate, uh, the read on it was accurate, and so it's very important to kind of have an understanding for how these kind of things work right now. Um, but since that trade, everything's been clicking really, really well. Um, so I want to stay there. Like I said, you want to be firing on all cylinders. When I'm trading really, really well, if something's not working, it's out. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not focused on it. Whatever's working, I'm scaling in because that means my thesis is correct. So uh, if you guys have any questions, leave comments below. 
You know the drill. Uh, I hope to see you guys in the room and have a good, uh, good rest of the night.